Hey y'all and welcome back to the party. It is your girl, Brit Reacts, and today we are gonna react to George Carlin saving the planet. Let's see what he has to say. See, I'm not one of these people who's worried about everything. You got people like this around you, country's full of them now. People walking around all day long, every minute of the day, worried about everything. Worried about the air, worried about the water, worried about the soil. Worried about insecticides, pesticides, food additives, carcinogens. Worried about radon gas, worried about asbestos. Worried about saving endangered species. Um, before we really get started, I'm already laughing at this because it's clearly from, gosh, maybe the 90s, maybe the 80s. I wanted to scroll down and see if it was going to be in the description. Um, but it's still so relevant today. Like, the best thing that some comics is, can do is create comedy that will age so well, like fine wine, just it'll never change. And obviously I, I'm not 100% sure when this was filmed, but to know that like this topic has been a topic for that long is so crazy to me. Now off topic, I love his little low ponytail. He's giving me like artist vibes, like uh, slam poetry vibes, you know? Um, and I just love this also reminds me growing up, um, we would watch Comic View on BET and this like this, the set behind him with like the, the cardboard buildings, it just is so nostalgic to me. I love it. I love the simplicity of this. Obviously it's recorded on what looks like like a handheld camcorder. Uh, so the quality is giving early 90s, 80s vibes. Um, but I, I just wanted to put that out there because it, it just feels nostalgic to me. So I'm excited to laugh because I know he's going to make me laugh. Let me tell you about endangered species, all right? Saving endangered species is just one more arrogant attempt by humans to control nature. It's arrogant meddling. It's what got us in trouble in the first place. Doesn't anybody understand that? Interfering with nature. Over 90%, over, way over 90% of all the species that have ever lived on this planet, ever lived, are gone. <laughs> Stink. That's terrible. We didn't kill them all. <laughs> they just disappeared. That's what nature does. They disappear these days at the rate of 25 a day. And I mean regardless of our, our behavior. Irrespective of Is that true? Species disappear and become extinct at the rate of 25 per day? And that was back then? Is this true? Is this true? I'm not a nature girly. I'm not a, um, I care about the planet. Please, please do not <laughs> come at me in my comments. I definitely care about the planet in my footprint, but I just like, I don't know a lot about national geographic topic type things is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> is that true? That is so sad. That is so sad. How we act on this planet, 25 species that were here today will be gone tomorrow. Let them go gracefully. <laughs> Leave nature alone. Haven't we done enough? <laughs> We're so self-important. So self-important. Everybody's going to save something now. Save the trees. Save the bees. Save the whales. Save those snails. <laughs> and the greatest arrogance of all, save the planet. What? Are these people kidding me? <laughs> save the planet? We don't even have to take care of ourselves yet. We haven't learned how to care for one another. We're going to save that's deep. How can we save the planet when we can't even care for each other? Again, something still relevant today. That's deep. That's food for thought. I'm tired of these self-righteous environmentalists, these white bourgeois liberals who think the only thing wrong with this country is there aren't enough bicycle paths. <laughs> trying to make the world safe for their Volvos. Besides, environmentalists don't give a shit about the planet. They don't care about the planet. Not in the abstract, they don't. Not in the abstract, they don't. You know what they're interested in? A clean place to live. Their own habitat. They're worried that someday in the future they might be personally inconvenienced. Narrow, unenlightened self-interest doesn't impress me. Besides, there is nothing wrong with the planet. Nothing wrong with the planet. The planet is fine. The people are <laughs> difference. Difference. The planet is fine. Compared 
to the people, the planet is doing great. It's been here four and a half billion years. <laughs> you ever think about the arithmetic? planet has been here four and a half billion years. We've been here, what, 100,000? Maybe 200,000? And we've only been engaged in heavy industry for a little over 200 years. 200 years versus four and a half billion. And we have the conceit to think that somehow we're a threat? This man is so educated. He's so educated. He's so educated. It's like mind blowing to me that, you know, his title is comedian, but no, he's like a philosopher. Like he is very smart. He, he, I don't know if in his past life he was a professor somewhere, but he should be, or he should have been because he's very, very, very smart. Wow. What a smart individual. Um, the ability to take real world life topics, real world life issues and talk about them and educate people. He's educating us. He's entertaining us. He's making us laugh and he's making a million points, like really good thought provoking points. He's not a comedian. Like we cannot just put him in the box of comedian. This man is far, far beyond just someone that makes us laugh. He is genius for lack of better word he's a genius that somehow we're going to put in jeopardy this beautiful little blue green ball that's just a floating around the sun the planet has been through a lot worse than us been through all kinds of things worse than us been through earthquakes volcanoes plate tectonics continental drift solar flares sunspots magnetic storms the magnetic reversal of the poles hundreds of thousands of years of bombardment by comets and asteroids and meteors worldwide floods tidal waves worldwide fires erosion cosmic rays recurring ice ages and we think some plastic bags and some aluminum cans are going to make a difference <laughs> <laughs> nah i feel him on this i'm not gonna hold you i feel him i feel him on this but you guys um the one i don't know he was going off on all this and the one thing i can think about is paper straws and how much i hate them <laughs> i don't know why i'm just like jo jo he's very right and for some reason i'm like so like can we get rid of paper straws if he's telling this truth it's like i don't know that was it was such a random thought that just popped in my head but like I cannot stand a paper straw. I cannot stand a paper straw. If you like paper straws, I'm I'm concerned. If you like actually drinking out of them, I'm like don't tell me you like them because of the cause, right? They save the turtles. I get it. Please do not tell me you actually enjoy drinking anything out of a, a paper straw. Like I can't stand when a restaurant hands me hands me a paper straw. I almost want to like ask for my money back. Like actually, I don't want this iced coffee. Give me my seven dollars back. <laughs> Please. <laughs> going anywhere. We are. Yes, yes, we are. Away. Back to shit, folks. <laughs> We're going away. Don't want really you much of a trace either. Thank God for that. Maybe a little styrofoam. Maybe. A little styrofoam. Planet will be here and we'll be all gone. Just another failed mutation. Just another closed-in biological mistake. An evolutionary cul-de-sac. The planet will shake us off like a bad case of fleas. <laughs> a surface nuisance. <laughs> you know how the planet's doing? Ask those people at Pompeii who are frozen into position. For volcanic ash. How the planet's doing. <clears throat> I don't know if the planet's all right, ask those people in Mexico City or Armenia or a hundred other places buried under thousands of tons of earthquake rubble if they feel like a threat to the planet this week. How about those people in Kilauea, Hawaii, who build their homes right next to an active volcano and then wonder why they have lava in the living room? The planet will be here for a long, long, long time after we're gone and it will heal itself, it will cleanse itself, because that's what it does. It's a self-correcting system. The air and the water will recover, the earth will be renewed, and if it's true that plastic is not degradable, well, the planet will simply incorporate plastic into a new paradigm, the earth plus plastic. <laughs> the earth doesn't share our prejudice towards plastic. Plastic came out of the earth. The earth probably sees plastic as just another one of its children. Could be the only reason the Earth allowed us to be spawned from it in the first place. 
It wanted plastic for itself. <laughs> Didn't know how to make it. Needed us. Could be the answer to our age-old philosophical question, why are we here? Plastic. <laughs> plastic is here, our job is done, we can be phased out now, and I think that's really started already, don't you? I mean, to be fair, the planet probably sees us as a mild threat, something to be dealt with, and I'm sure the planet will defend itself in, in, in the uh, manner of a large organism, like a beehive or an ant colony can muster a defense, I'm sure the planet will think of something. What would you do if you were the planet trying to defend against this pesky, troublesome species? Let's see, what might, oh, viruses, viruses might be good, they seem vulnerable to viruses. And uh, viruses are tricky, always mutating and forming new strains whenever a vaccine is developed. Perhaps this first virus could be one that, that compromises the immune system of these creatures. Perhaps a human immunodeficiency virus making them vulnerable to all sorts of other diseases and infections that bring them along. Is there some foreshadowing happening here? Like, is there some foreshadowing happening here? What in the even heck is happening? And maybe it could be spread sexually, making them a little reluctant to engage in the act of reproduction. Okay, he's talking now about that's another virus. Point, no. And it's a start. And I can dream, can I? Can I worry about the little things? Bees, trees, whales, snails. I think we're part of a greater wisdom than we will ever understand. A higher order. Call it what you want. You know what I call it? The big electron. The big electron. Whoa. Whoa. What? Whoa. It doesn't punish. It doesn't, it doesn't judge at all. It just is. And so are we. For a little while. Thanks for being here with me for a little while. Too. Huge audience. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. Um, what a thoughtful, educated, funny man, which is a trifecta if you ask me. Um, yeah, that was good, y'all. That was good. I got nothing bad to say and I said everything I needed to say. And so did he. Um, please don't ever give me a paper straw. All right. With that being said, please go have the day you deserve. Peace.